have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Jacob Frankel. He is the former governor of the Bank of Israel. He is the chairman of the Group of 30, and he is currently the chairman of J.P. Morgan International. Dr. Frankel, a pleasure to have you here. And my colleague Deirdre Bolton just mentioning a couple of moments ago the Volcker Rule. Paul Volcker has a plan to rein in risk-taking and fix the problems in the U.S. banking system. It's supported by the president, and he announced them just last week. Is Paul Volcker's plan the right plan? Well, Paul Volcker is a very wise man, an experienced man, and we clearly need to listen attentively. Uh, there is no question that a regulatory reform in this area is urgent. What is important, however, and like always, the devil is in the details, I uh, strongly endorse the idea that risk-taking should be managed in a way that will not be excessive, that taxpayers' money should not be involved when there is a problem, etc. However, having said this, I believe, for example, that uh, the idea that uh, financial institutions should not own, say, hedge funds is based on the supposition that if there is a problem, taxpayers' money will be involved, and that's why they should not own hedge funds. In my judgment, you can achieve the same objective without such a tough measure, in particular by insisting that hedge funds are not using insured, insure, insured deposits in order to capitalize them, but rather they should be capitalized by the holding company from the capital that uh, the holding company has without having you to use insured deposits. So the bottom line is, yes, we must ensure that there is no taxpayers' money risk, but we should find the mechanism to do it while keeping the financial institutions robust. Dr. Frankel, that's a great idea, but is it really practical? What you're talking about is setting up silos within a bank to protect deposits on the one hand, to use equity capital on the other. You would create wholesale financed divisions, effectively investment banks, inside commercial banks. How is that really practical? And how can you trust certain institutions to manage it effectively? Uh, or at least you can assume that certain institutions, the ones that got through the crisis safely, will manage it effectively. What about the others that didn't? Surely they would bring the financial system close to its knees once again. Right. Well, to begin with, uh, much of the difficulties that we have had did not arise from the hedge funds and the like. It came from careless uh, lending, primarily in the area of real estate. But to your question, I think that that's exactly the reason why we need to have strong regulation and strong supervision. With the regulatory reform and with the supervisory capacity, this should be capable to be implemented. What's the probability that this becomes an international movement, that the UK, Germany, France pick up on what Paul Volcker has suggested and make it all but impossible to come up with something else? Well, the issue is, uh, my assumption is that once it goes into a legislative process, all of the areas of, uh, that need clarifications will be clarified. Paul Volcker is a very reasonable man. So the idea of Paul is not let's do this for the sake of doing it, but rather if he will see the same objective can be achieved in a more efficient way, so be it. For example, the idea that uh, a financial institution cannot be too large because you don't want to have too large to fail and therefore let's slice it down to smaller units, uh, has a logic of its own, but I think it is we can achieve the same objective by having a resolution mechanism and the authority for the authorities to implement the resolution mechanism so that when a large bank gets into trouble, there is a mechanism to deal with it. It does not need to be too big to fail, but the failure will be managed. So the issue again is not size. The issue is not size. The issue is not size. The issue is the implication of if things do not go well, you want to ensure that there is no chain effect. For this, you need a resolution mechanism that will prevent it. That's all. That's all. So too big to a resolution mechanism is the only thing required for too big to fail. But you're effectively saying, you know what, uh, you're effectively saying that uh, Paul Volcker is wrong in a certain no, respect. No, no, no. I, I will never say that Paul Volcker is wrong because his credibility is so high, okay. but he is reasonable. But let me say again. Uh, we, we have to wrap it up, please. I'm afraid. We've got to go to a break. Dr. Frankel, so good of you to join us right here. Dr. Jacob Frankel of J.P. Morgan International.